Okay, so we're going to practice calculating molar mass. Yeah. Here we have some actual examples of uh, some molar mass uh, problems that we could be doing. So the very first problem that we're gonna do and the very first step is going to involve C2H3O2. The very first thing that you're always going to do is you're going to list out the actual elements that are involved in the compound. Everything that is a capital letter is going to be a separate element. So we have C, that's carbon. We have H, hydrogen, O, oxygen. So now I have everything listed out. Everybody that's actually in the compound is listed. And I can go ahead and look at my periodic table to find the masses of each element. So I'm going to look at the periodic table and I'm going to find carbon. I see that carbon's mass is 12.011. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to write on carbon space 12.011. Then for hydrogen, I'm gonna look at hydrogen. I'm gonna see that it is 1.008 and I'm going to write 1.008. Once I have hydrogen's mass, I can go ahead and go on to oxygen. I have oxygen's mass according to the periodic table is 15.999. So I'll write that as well. Once I have all my masses, I can go ahead and multiply by how many I actually have present in the compound. And that's gonna be from those subscripts. Remember that the subscripts are accounts for actual number of elements in the compound. So carbon, I have a subscript of two, which means I'm going to be multiplying this mass by two. Hydrogen, I have a subscript of three, so I'll multiply hydrogen's mass by three. And then oxygen, I have a subscript of two, so I'll multiply oxygen's mass by two. Once I have all of that, I'm gonna go ahead and take my calculator and I'm gonna plug those numbers in. So I have 12.011, that's carbon's mass, and I'm multiplying it by two. That gives me the number of 24.022. Then I'm going to do that same math for hydrogen, 1.008. I'm multiplying it by three. That gives me 3.024. Now I have oxygen. Oxygen's mass is at 15.999. I have two of them, so I'm gonna multiply it by two. And that gives me the mass of 31.998. Once I have all of these uh, resultant masses, I can go ahead and add all of them up. So I'm going to add 24.022, 3.024, and 31.998. That gives me the number 59. 0.044. This mass has a unit. We cannot just stop here. This is a naked number. It's not okay to just report a number without a unit. It's not suitable for public viewing when it's naked, so we're going to attach appropriate units. Molar mass units are always going to be grams per mole, and then I'm always going to go ahead and I'm going to attach the actual compounds formula so that I know exactly who I'm dealing with. So that was C2H3O2. And that is calculating the molar mass for C2H3O2. Now we're going to head and do another example problem. Let's go ahead and uh, figure out the molar mass for HCl. So again, very first step, I'm going to list out the elements that are involved. This L is a lowercase, so it gets attached to the next uppercase letter. That's at C, so this is its own element. We're gonna look at hydrogen's mass on the periodic table. Hydrogen's mass, again, is going to be 1.008. Chlorine's mass, according to the periodic table, is 35.453. And now that we have all of our masses written down, 
we're gonna go ahead and multiply the number that we actually have. Now, neither hydrogen or chlorine have subscripts here. And remember that invisible subscripts are just ones. I'm gonna go ahead and multiply by one for both, just so that I know that I actually completed the problem. I did all of the appropriate steps, even though multiplying by one does not actually change my number. This also allows it to be uh, aligned on the same side. That next step is going to just be to add those up. So I'm going to go ahead and add those up. I do need a calculator for this part. So I'm just going to say 1.008 plus 35.453. That gives me the number 36.461. Now remember that number does need to have a unit. We can't just leave it naked. Unit for molar mass is always going to be grams per mole. And then we're going to list the actual uh, compound that this is a part of. I didn't leave myself enough space here. Normally you would write it off to the side on this over here. I don't have enough room, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put it underneath. But just for yourself, try to keep it in, in line. That was a mistake on my part. Let's try a couple more. So we have F2. Luckily for us, there's only one comp, uh, there's only one element here, so listing it out doesn't take that long. I'm gonna check on the periodic table. I see that fluorine's mass is 18.998. I have two of them. That gives me the number 37.996. I don't have anything to add up here, so this number is actually just going to be my final answer. And I'm just going to go ahead and attach the appropriate unit grams per mole, and then of course the compound, so F2. Sodium sulfate over here, we're back to having multiple elements. So don't forget, everybody gets listed. Again, that A is lowercase, so it gets attached to the end, so we know that it's sodium. Sodium's mass, according to the periodic table, is 22.99. Zero. Sulfur's mass, according to the periodic table, is 32.066. And oxygen's mass, according to the periodic table, is 15.999. I'm going to go ahead and multiply all of those by the subscripts. Sodium subscript is 2, so I'm going to multiply sodium's mass by 2. Sulfur doesn't have a subscript, so that's an invisible subscript of 1. And oxygen has a subscript of four, so I multiply oxygen's mass by four. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the calculator. So 22.990 times two gives me a nice round number of 45.98. 32.066 times one is going to just go ahead and give me 32. 0.066 and finally 15.999 times 4 is going to give me the number 63.996. I'm going to go ahead and add all of those numbers together. I'm going to try to give myself enough room for the actual unit this time. Hopefully I manage to do that. That gives me the number 142.042, and it's unit time. Unit for molar mass is always gonna be grams per mole, and then we need to attach the actual molecular formula, Na2SO4. Ooh, 
I barely made it onto the page. I know you didn't actually see it initially, but I did technically make it. We're gonna try to not mess that up again for the next one, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, last problem set, last examples. We have silver nitrate and magnesium chloride. Silver nitrate, we again have a G. That G is lowercase, so it's gonna be attached to A making it silver, then I have nitrogen and oxygen. Silver's mass, according to the periodic table, is going to be 107.868. Nitrogen's mass, according to the periodic table, is going to be 14.007. And as I'm sure you have accidentally memorized by now, oxygen's mass is going to be 15.999. Okay, we're gonna multiply by the subscript. Silver has an invisible subscript. Invisible subscripts are always one. Nitrogen also has an invisible subscript, so it's also multiplied by one. And oxygen has a subscript of 3, so we're going to multiply it by 3. I'm just going to go ahead and plug the uh, numbers that are still being multiplied by 1 in here, just so that you can see that I'm not lying to you. It is actually the same number. But I'm just going to do it anyway, just to make sure that I don't accidentally mess anything up. I don't skip any steps, get into any bad habits. Finally got to do something other than multiply a number by one, and we got the number 47.997. Last step, as always, is to add them up. So 107.868 plus 14.007 plus 47.997 gives me the number 169.872. That number's naked, it needs a unit. It's gonna get the unit for molar mass, which is always grams per mole, along with our formula, AgNO3, silver nitrate. Last problem, guys, magnesium chloride. We're gonna get magnesium and chlorine, and this is gonna be the one. This is gonna be the one that I actually give myself enough room. Magnesium. Magnesium's mass is going to be 24.305. And chlorine's mass is going to be 35.453. Okay, let's go ahead and multiply it by their subscripts. Magnesium has an invisible subscript. That always gives me a, a multiplication of one. Chlorine has the subscript of two, so I'm gonna multiply by two. I'm sure you trust me by now. 24.305 times one is in fact still 24.305, so I'm not gonna bother to plug that into the calculator, but I am gonna plug into the calculator the 35.453 times two. That will give me the number 70.906. I'm gonna add those numbers up and we're gonna see if I can manage to give myself enough room this time. So 24.305 plus 70.906 gives me the number 95.211 grams per mole MgCl2. I made it. That is um, all of the practice that we're going to do um, for molar mass calcs. Please make sure that you pause the video, rewatch it, or anything like that if you have any questions on how to do this.